In CSS, understanding how floats work can be a complicated procedure. There's a term called block formatting context, which defines how the browser actually controls and contains floats. You can read more about the block formatting context in some of the related resources, but the general idea is that a block formatting context is how floats are contained. Let's take a look at some examples of how this applies and how we can actually start to control where floats end and begin. I'll start by creating two boxes in our layout, a left box and a right box. Next, I'll float the left box, and let's see how this affects our layout. I'll also add some background colors so we can see how this looks. Let's load up the page and see what happens. By floating our left box, we forced it to align some content. But what's interesting is that even though our purple box here, the right box, is not floated at all, it is now side by side with our left box. Let's change a couple things so we can see this clearer. First, I'll set the width of our left box to 50%. Now we can see it's pushing the content even further. But let's take a look at what's really happening here. If I can increase the height of my right box to be a little bit taller, let's say 100 pixels, you'll notice that the box actually is much larger than it appears. And to go even farther, if I change the background of the left box to be slightly transparent by using RGBA, we'll see that the purple is actually behind it. So here I'm setting it to a color with a 50% opacity. And we can see that there's purple behind it. If I add more text to the right box, it will wrap to the next line. Here I filled the right box with some placeholder text. And there we can see that the content is flowing. Because I've set the height to 50 pixels and haven't overflowed the content, we can still see it going past the bottom line. But the key here is this floated context. Sometimes this is intended, for instance, if we want text to wrap around an image. But sometimes we want our left box and our right box to be completely separate. We'll take advantage of the block formatting context by forcing an overflow hidden on our right box. By adding overflow hidden without setting a width, and I can even remove the height, let's see how our content changes. Here we can see our floated content on the left is fully breaking in the middle, while our content on the right has now been fully contained. This is because the context has been specified as the left line of this content and therefore everything inside must match that level. We can now float things in both the left and right column to make this work. This also works with both left and right floats. Let's try adding a right column and setting our content to be displayed in the middle. In our page I'll modify our code a little bit. I'll change our placeholder text to be our middle box, and I'll add a new right box. So we have our left box, our right box, and our middle box. In main CSS, I'll change this code to match our middle box, since we've changed that around. 
And I'll add another rule for our right box. I'll have this one float right and give it a width of 100 pixels. I'll modify the width of my left box to also be 100 pixels. And I'll change the background of both elements. OK, let's see what our content looks like. Here we can see we have a fluid width center column with fixed width left and right columns. If I scale this window, we'll see that this is maintained. This is because we've added a block formatting context to our center content, which forces it to contain all of its contents and not allow them to spill out into either side. So in essence, using the block formatting context allows us to control our floats in the page. Because the floats allow the browser to render content differently than it normally does, using these block formatting contexts allows us to rein in control of how the browser actually handles this content. Coupling this with clear and overflow hidden, we have a lot of control with just some simple CSS rules.